Hey guys, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we pour concrete floor using a conveyor truck. I sped the video up a little bit so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. This was about a 40 minute pour, so I shrunk it down to about 15 minutes for you. Now you can see how easy and convenient that conveyor truck is to get concrete where we need it. That conveyor will reach out about 40 feet from the back of the truck. So it, it will save you some time as far as wheelbarrow in it. It'll save you some money over getting a pump. This would have been a pretty long pull for us just to hook a concrete chute to the back of the truck or try wheeling it. So that's why we decided to use the conveyor truck on this job. You can see how easy that boot makes it to get the concrete where you want it. And we had to go a little further than we could reach, so we, we just used one of our smaller chutes and poured the concrete right into the chute to get it to, with, get it to that back wall. Yeah, we're going to give the concrete a little drink there. It was getting a little stiff. Now that conveyor, it, it also telescopes in and out, so you can move it out to about 40 feet, and then he can shrink it up to about 28 feet. It'll go in and out about 12 feet. So that makes it pretty handy too. You don't have to move the truck quite as much. This is about an 800 square foot floor we're pouring here. I don't know if you can see, but with this, they got radiant heat down there tied to the wire. And we're pouring on top of two inches of styrofoam. This is pretty common in Maine. Most of the house floors we pour like this, they have the radiant heat in the basement. They have uh, the concrete walls like this because we get a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. So we have to get the foundation walls down below the frost line. The frost will go down about four feet into the ground. So this will keep the floor from freezing and heaving. There's probably, I think there was 10 yards of concrete on that truck. That's the most they can put on this truck with that conveyor. Otherwise, it wouldn't be legal to drive it on the roads. It would be too heavy. So as you can see, we're just getting a bunch poured out. We'll pour out, you know, just about half of this floor. We're using a, a 3000 PSI mix that has fiber mesh in it. You can't really see the fiber mesh. They call it microfiber. So that's the reinforcement we use. We don't pull that radiant tubing up into the floor. The, the heating guys like it right on the bottom. That way it, it heats the whole thickness of the concrete, the four inches of the concrete from the bottom up. If we pull that up into the middle of the concrete, then the heat from the tubing would be warmer on the top of the concrete than it would on the bottom because the heat rises. So. Most of these heating guys like to leave that tubing right on the bottom like that. And that's where it seems to be the most efficient. You can see he's pulling that conveyor back now. He's got a remote. You see the driver over there, which makes it pretty convenient. We'll get a good half of this floor poured out before we start to straight edge it. You just go back and forth. The cost for this is about, for a 10 yard truck, it's about 250 bucks extra to get the conveyor. So I mean, for us, that's that's worth it, well worth it to get this floor and it speeds it up, makes it quicker to pour. A pump truck would cost us about $900 to get a pump truck to do this floor. So there's quite a significant savings over a pump truck and then if we just tried to shoot or wheelbarrow this, you know, that's just more labor. So for 250 bucks, it's kind of a no-brainer for us just to get it, especially if it's just the three of us here. So I'm shooting my grades now, shooting my wet pad. We wet screed everything. Sometimes we'll use a vibra screed, and sometimes we'll just kick screed it the old-fashioned way. This one we're just going to kick screed. So we're matching the top of that front wall there where those guys are magging the edge right now. I'm just going to make this floor flat. This will end up being just a residential house for somebody. They're going to have a they're going to finish this basement off, so they got to 
place for a bathroom down there. That's a 14 foot straight edge we're using, a magnesium straight edge. Hey guys, while I'm thinking of it, you know, if you like if you like these videos, go down there and hit the like button for me. And hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification while you're down there. So you'll be updated with all my future videos. I put out these videos, I like to put out a couple a week. So you can watch and learn how we do it. These videos are for, you know, learning. I, I like to teach people the process of how we pour concrete up here in Maine. And, you know, maybe you you already know and you don't need to learn anything. Sometimes it's just interesting to watch. But for a lot of people, they, you know, they like to know how we do it. Sometimes we do it different. Sometimes we do something that might be easier. Sometimes we may do it harder. But uh, this floor would just kick screeding because of all the pipes and stuff. And it's not that big. So it it really doesn't take us any longer to kick screed versus using a vibra screed on this. We've been doing it this way for, I've been doing it for 38 years, so both, both my guys have been working for me a long, long time, one over 20 and one about 15. So we're pretty fast at this kick screeding thing. And it gets it really flat too. There's no humps, there's no dips. It's within an eighth of an inch when we're done. See, we're just getting around those pipes now. We like to pour about a five, six inch slump. This concrete's got a water reducer in it too, so the water reducer helps keep the concrete water ratio a little drier than normal, but it also helps with the slump too. It helps, it lets us pour it a little looser, kind of like a super plasticizer. So we use that in the concrete every day, that water reducer. So we can pour a six inch slump. Without the water reducer, it would probably be like a three or a four inch slump. And for those of you who don't know, slump is what we call how stiff or how loose the concrete is. So we generally like between a five and a six inch slump when we pour our floors. Yeah, you can see how we kick and pull back, kick and pull back. We don't have to stop, we just keep going. We're going to give that a quick mix and we're going to start and pour the rest of this out. So two of us will pour a little more concrete then that other guy will get a small straight edge and he'll finish off those around that box. That box is probably for a shower. And we get a bowl floats this still. You can see how easy that boot makes it from the conveyor just to put the concrete right where you need it and we pour these floors every day sometimes two a day so you know we don't want to be killing ourselves each day pulling concrete any more than we have to you can see that's got quite a got about a six foot radius there I can push and pull that boot back so it covers a lot of ground <laughs> Then the driver just moves it along with us. Having a good driver helps make things easy too. This guy's been driving concrete trucks for years, so he knows he can pretty much read our minds as far as where we want the concrete to go. So we got one guy over there magging the edge. We got a chalk line snapped on the wall. He's magging that edge to that chalk line. And that's the pad we'll use to straight edge from over there. You know, I just grabbed the bull float. I'm going to bull float that smooth. And that's how we'll leave it until it's ready to power trial. We'll end up power troweling this floor really smooth. And then they can use that as their finished floor. Or they can put some type of flooring over it. Yeah, we're getting right down to the end. We want to get a little bit more poured out before we start straight edging that. See how he shrinks that conveyor right in there? Then he'll just extend it out as we pour that last little piece. We've been using these conveyor trucks for, I don't know, probably 
15 years now they've had them. Just recently they got this one that extends in and out, and that makes it pretty handy. Before we always had to move the truck back and forth every four or five feet, depending on where we wanted to move that boot. They got one by one guy over there, bull floating. Nice having three guys. I mean, it makes it makes this process pretty easy. You know, four would be even easier, but three is a pretty good number for doing most residential floors. We get that edge mag, and then we'll get that up there straight edged. So we live in Maine and you know we pour concrete about nine sometimes nine and a half months out of the year the months we don't usually pour especially outside are towards the middle of December you know January February and when it starts getting into March things warm up a little bit more we can stop pouring some stuff outside if there isn't any frost in the ground Occasionally someone will want us to pour right outside in the middle of the winter, but not very often. We usually it's usually an inside pour We do a bunch of other things in the winter for work. We do a lot of repair work. We do a lot of epoxy floors We stay quite busy in the winter too, but in the summer in the summer This is our main bread and butter pouring concrete. So we'll like I said, we'll do at least a floor a day or a concrete slab, sometimes two. Uh, we'll, we do a lot of setup. We do a lot of the forming on concrete slabs. and We do a lot of stamp concrete. We're one of the few contractors in the area that does stamp concrete, so that keeps us pretty busy. There's quite a few guys around that do floors. But we've been doing it so long that you know everybody knows us. We don't need to advertise or anything. We work for a lot of foundation guys that hire us to do their floors. So we just specialize in the flat work. We kind of like that old style bull float too where you push it down and you pull it up. A lot of guys like the one where you just have to twist the handle. And the, we have one of those too, but this is just the one we were taught on. So that's why we use that bull float. We like the aluminum come-alongs too. They're really lightweight. Some guys like the heavy ones, but we like the aluminum ones. They're pretty easy to handle. You can see I'm riding the top of the wall there while my other guy's wet screeding on the inside. Pulling that right down. So again, hey, if you like these videos, go ahead and hit the like button. If if you're down there, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification. So you'll be updated on all my future videos. Hey, if there's anybody watching that, that pours concrete floors, just leave me a yes down in the comments so I know that you pour concrete floors. If you'd like to learn how to pour concrete floors, then just type learn in the comments. That would really help me out as far as making some of these future videos. You can see my guy's got a short straight edge there. Just kick screen by himself. These two guys are pretty good. They can go out, they could pour concrete floors like this by themselves. They don't need me. They've been doing it a long, long time. We're going to just finish that one little square there. We had plenty of concrete, which is always a good thing. You never want to run out. I usually order about a half a yard extra. It's never a good thing to run out. Not good for the floor guy, not good for the concrete company. See I'm running that bull float back and forth there. Got about 18 feet of handle I can reach with. The guy's going to finish that off. Step out of there and that's it. We'll be done with this floor. Like I said, this floor probably took us about, I don't know, 40 to 45 minutes to pour this floor. 10 yards. That's not too bad. The concrete company is pretty good with us about how long we need the concrete truck there. Most times we're pretty fast. There 
he's going to strike that off and then he's done and I'll finish it up yeah all right guys well that's it that's how you pour a concrete floor using a conveyor truck we'll see you on the next video and thanks for watching